Okay, we can also do a combo box, which is like a menu. I'm gonna get rid of toggle button since we're not using it. It's called combo box uh, menu. I'll call it menu. Add and make visible menu. Uh, we need to give it a default text, like if nothing is chosen. Uh, chosen. Set text uh, when nothing selected. So like when it initializes, let's just say choices. And then let's use set bounds to put it somewhere on the screen. Menu dot set bounds. Um, I'll say um, I'll just put it to the right of the dial. So the dial dot get x plus dial dot get y. The y I'll just put it at top margin so that it's not around uh, them. I'll just make it the same size as the button. It doesn't really matter. Let's just see what it looks like. So here it is called choices. And it has no choices because all we did was set the text whenever nothing selected. And it looks like I need to make it a little wider because the text looks a little weird. So I could just go and button width and say uh, times 1.5 to make it wider. Uh, and then we can actually give it some choices, like some items. So we can do that with menu dot set. No, add item, I think it's called. Add item, yeah. So the text of the item. So let's just say, uh, I don't know, EQ. And new, uh, new item ID. So just like the number of what it is. And it doesn't start at zero, which you might uh, think when you think about like arrays and stuff, it starts at one. Uh, so let's just make a couple of these and then let's change it to two and three. And then let's say like compressor or something, flipper. Cool, and now we have those options put in. Now all of these components, or I mean not all of them, but most of them will have some kind of on action method. So like the dial, it's called on value change, uh, which will let you write some code that executes when the dial changes. And then for buttons, it's like on click. And then for the menu, it's on choice uh, or something. Hold up, combo box. And if you scroll, if you're on the docs for one of the components, if you scroll down past the public member functions, you'll get something that says std function void and that's usually where there's going to be like on change it's called on change for the buttons it's called on click and for the slider i think it's just called on i think it's called on value change but this is an easy way to have them do something so real quick let's do that for each of them this isn't the way we're going to use to actually interact with the uh, tree state there's a different uh, class for handling that but this is um, something that could be useful for certain things so we could say after dial we could say dial dot on change on value change and what we need to do is set a function so you see how it takes in void function void as on change you can assign a lambda to this so it's actually pretty easy so you could do is equal to and this is how you set up the lambda. You would use brackets and you could say this, you put in parentheses, and then the actual body of the thing you, um, the actual body of the code block. So you can see it kind of looks like a regular method, uh, except we have this, uh, this keyword in the brackets. And then we have a, or whatever code we put in here will get executed on value change. Uh, and you can see that inside of slider, let's think of something cool we can do when the slider changes. Let's see, let's look at something that's get. So let's get something. We can do get value, returns the slider's current value. So get value will give you what the slider's value is. So we can use, uh, we can use debug like we use in the um, audio side, uh, dbg for debug, and this will log something to the console. So when the value changes, we'll say dial dot get value, and that should give us the value of the slider, and that should be good to go. And oh, it's already running. So let's hit play. If we watch the console right here, whenever I move the dial, uh, yep, we're getting the numbers. Cool. So that on value change is working for us. So that's actually really simple. The other way to do this would be to set up like a slider listener and attach the listener and implement and override the listener callback and um, that's a whole lot of extra stuff that's unnecessary this lambda is so much easier um we could do it for the button so we could say button dot on yeah on click and then the same thing we do the brackets with this we do our parentheses and then we could do curly braces for the body 
and we can also we can debug something uh we could say button dot git let's get toggle state oh wait it doesn't like that yeah the debug statement doesn't like this hold up maybe if i cast it to like bool how about now it still doesn't like it Int. and there we go when it's on one off zero cool and then for the menu, we could do something that's a little more meaningful. Menu dot uh, on change is equal to brackets this, parentheses, the body, semicolon. Uh, we can debug something. So let's debug. You have selected. And then we're going to need to add something else. So in the debug call, you can put two less than signs to separate statements. So you have selected and then let's get the current thing we're on. So uh, menu dot get, uh, I wanna get the text of the thing we selected. So let's go back to the docs and see combo box. There's gotta be a way to get the, uh, the text. So we've got, yeah, get item text and then the item index. Okay, so get item text, get item text and then the current index. Okay, so I guess it's get something. Get, yeah, get item ID, get selected ID menu dot get selected id or get selected item index that should work okay cool so so whenever we do something we're gonna print out you have selected and then we're gonna get the menu item text at the selected item that we have selected so let's see if that actually works look at that you have selected compressor you have selected clipper EQ, awesome, side panel. So let's just go to the group component. Um, the group component is probably not gonna have a on something. Yeah, because it doesn't actually do anything. But I want to show you because I do use it. So let's just make one real quick. Um, I'll just call it border because that's basically what it is. Add and make visible uh, border. Okay, uh, the only thing we really need to do, you can set the color and you can set like the text. Uh, and you can see that in the docs. There's not really that many things. Oh yeah, you can do get text label position, get text, set text. There's really not that much. It only has two color IDs also, the text color and then the outline. And I'll show you what it looks like. Um, so let's just set the text. Border set text. And I'll call it, this is a volume and phase. So I'll just call it utility or something. And then we're going to set the bounds and it's going to basically take up the whole bounds of where the dial and the button are. So border set bounds, the X position, I'm probably going to put it at left margin. The Y is going to be top margin. The width is probably going to be dial size. And then the height is going to be okay. So dial dot get y plus dial dot get height plus you need to include the button dot get y plus button dot get height and then it's probably not going to look perfect it's going to probably be touching everything but we can fix that we just want to make sure that it's in the, the right general area. Oh, what did I do? It's way too big. Uh, the X position, the Y position, the width dial that get Y, which is here, plus dial that get height, which should be there. Plus, oh, plus button that get Y because the Y position is from here all the way to there. Button height, is that all we need to do? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then what we need to do is, I guess just move where the y position is so let's just do this let's say top margin times 0 0.5 so that it moves it down see what that looks like or moves it up i should say yeah that's good enough i'll get rid of the menu because we're not actually going to use that cool cool okay there we go our ui um the window doesn't need to be this big. The window can just be, let's see. I like the size of the dial. Okay, it's 250, but that's because it's based off of this width. So let's make it 600 by 300. Is that big enough? Oh, let's make it a rectangle, but the other way. So let's do 
300 by 600 and that's gonna look ridiculous because we'll need to adjust the parameters in the or the variables in the resize init window is constraining let's make it from 200 to 400 to 400 800 Oh, it's actually bigger than I thought. Oh, maybe, maybe I want it to be a square. Okay, there we go, that's a square. Okay, cool, so like I said, we're gonna need to adjust the size of the, uh, the components, but I think this window is pretty much what I want. And yeah, so let's see. Left margin, top margin, uh, dial size is gonna be get width. 6.5 should probably be good. Yeah, that works. Okay, so we just need to shift it over to where it needs to go. Um, left margin, let's see. But we think about this, the dial, apparently this is 0.65. So what's left of the screen is 0.35. If we make it 0.64, what's left of the screen is 3.4. So the left margin should be 1.7 and that should give us 1.7 on the other side also. Did I, uh, did I math that correctly? I'm going to get rid of that juice stream from the paint method. Yeah, cool. So all I need to do now is put this group component where it needs to go. Uh, border top margin times 0.5, maybe times 0.25 is what I want. And then we're going to have to make it longer or taller. Okay. Yeah. That put it in a good spot. That's actually not too bad. And then I don't know, let's add 10 to it. Okay. There we go. There's our UI. You can see how much longer this took than just going into the processor editor and saying return new generic audio processor editor. So I definitely recommend to do all of your DSP first and then sketch out after what you want the UI to look like because you might end up finding some things in your DSP that could be turned into a dial or something that you didn't expect. Like maybe multiplying one part of your DSP gives you some kind of weird sound and you want to call it something. Um, so you might want to do all your DSP first and because it's so much faster to have some controls and then do the UI afterwards. Um, but yeah, here's our UI. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out my streams over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash doctor underscore bruising where I live stream juice and audio development tutorials on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 530 Central Standard Time. I'd love for you to drop into the chat, ask me questions live, and interact with me on stream. And don't forget the stream is also on my YouTube at Dr. Bruzen. You can also download the Viator DSP library that I'm currently working on to make Juice development even easier and faster with awesome looking user interface objects and DSP classes. There's also a documentation page for it, which is pretty cool, and you can find both of them on my GitHub. All of my current plugin releases are on my Patreon at Viator DSP and can be downloaded for free, but consider becoming a patron to continue to support me making free audio plugins. I'd also like to share two awesome Discord communities, Viator DSP and the Audio Visual Community. Both are dedicated to all things audio, so music production, recording, mixing, mastering, uh, coding, juice, pretty much anything. We would love to build an active community of like-minded folks who can learn from, collaborate with, and just hang out with and do whatever. The link to all these resources are down in the video description and I can't wait to see you there. All right, see you next time.